So, yeah, it's my pleasure to welcome everybody, uh, everybody to the meeting today uh, and just like to kick off by thanking you for uh, taking the time to, uh, to, to join us. Um, as Janet said, my name's uh, Mark Modner uh, and I'm delighted to be uh, here and involved in the event. Uh, I'm a director at Winnie Moves, uh, responsible for programmes that uh, deliver digital technology support in a, in a number of locations. Um, delighted to introduce also my colleagues today, Janet. I think obviously you you you've introduced yourself and uh, uh, and uh, Jackie, and I think you did the others before as well. But uh, just those that arrived um, just now, uh, Janet is our uh, project manager for the uh, for the program. Uh, Kate Pullman is our project coordinator who uh, supports uh, all of the activity. Uh, Jackie, obviously you, you you're working with us on the the marketing side of things as well as working with businesses. And uh, also pleased to introduce my co-presenter, Andrew Armitage, who is uh, providing uh, expert one-to-one -one support through the program and skills, uh, skills training as well. So uh, why are we here today? It always sounds like a bit of an existential question, um, but um, isn't intended to be. Um, main purpose really for, uh, for us is to share what's available for businesses. Um, that, uh, that you work with to help empower them in the digital world, really, in a, in a nutshell. Um, we also would like to outline the, the reasons and benefits uh, for yourselves for getting involved and supporting, um, as well as practically how that can, can happen. Um, I just wanted to sort of start, you know, start things by saying, you know, saying what do we, what do we mean by by digital technologies? Because it does it does mean a lot of different things to to different people, and I think you could run a whole. A whole day on this, a whole a whole event, um, but uh, but I'll limit it to this um, to this brief overview. Most of the support we provide centres on areas like uh, digital marketing, online sales, efficiencies through moving to the cloud, online accounting, and um, implementations of things like customer relationship management and enterprise research uh, resource planning uh, tools. Um, but we also assist with things like um, stepping up uh, protection with things like cybersecurity and around uh, uh, data protection as well. We can assist uh, with more emerging technologies such as uh, artificial intelligence, uh, virtual reality, Internet of Things, uh, etc. And, and delighted, you know, really, really happy to do so. Um, but the better known and more commonly used tools that I referred to at the beginning, that's where really most of the demand, the greatest demand in is where we're helping most, uh, most, most businesses. Our approach to, to the event today, we're intending it for, to be, um, you know, pretty uh, re reasonably informal. Please do feel to raise any, uh, feel free to raise any questions or add comments in the chat at any time. We're keeping an eye open for those. Please do leave your, your screens uh, open uh, and your cameras open, I should say. So uh, if you're happy to uh, happy to do so, but we we'll just ask you to mute unless you're, you're actually uh, speaking at that, that moment. Um, we're intending to be uh, succinct. So, because we know you're all busy people and um, uh, appreciate the time investment you're making to, uh, to, to be with us today. We hope we be a little entertaining, but we'll let you be the, be the judge of that. Also interactive, we're keen to get your feedback and thoughts so please feel free to, to, to get involved. Um, uh, speaking for hopefully all of us, I don't think any of us buy it, at least, uh, at least as far as I know. So uh, an outline agenda, um, we're gonna start, uh, I'm gonna hand over to Andrew in a few moments to start by sharing the story of a, uh, of a business that's received Digital Tech Cumbria, I think I'll continue to refer to it as DTC to save uh, a bit of time. Um, DTC support, which we believe is you know, a really great way to, to, to bring the service to life for everybody to, to really give a good flavour of what, uh, what's on offer. Um, then I'm going to go into providing an overview of exactly what businesses will receive, what the support looks like. Andrew will then provide detail of what's available through the Digital Skills Academy, um, which we've created to raise knowledge uh, in various essential topic areas around digital. Um, we've got a short exercise then to get your feedback in, on current levels of business readiness amongst the county businesses you engage with. We've got a, a, an additional short case study uh, sharing about another business that uh, has received some support from us. Then we'll, there'll be an opportunity for questions and answers, uh, discussion and feedback, very keen to get your, your views before we, uh, before we finally close um, with, um, with, with sort of final comments and how we intend to, uh, to follow up the session. So uh, thank you again for, for being with us and I shall hand over to, uh, to Andrew to kick things off. Andrew, over to you.
So Heather, please describe uh, West Point House for me. Tell me a little bit about it. West Point House is a 37 bedroom self catering hotel. You get a lovely room, comfortable bed, um, a shared lounge and a shared kitchen. And tell me, has digital and technology, has it always been important in the context of your business or is it a fairly new focus for you? Digital um, Tech Cumbria has really helped us enormously. Um, I had no idea of the power of social media. I, I, I'm on Facebook, but I, I had no idea how important it is. And and this project has, has opened our eyes to, to that. So let's talk a little bit more about the support that you had then under Digital Tech Cumbria. So what did that look like in practice? Um, Emily has been fantastic, our consultant. We've met over Zoom. We've realised how important social media is and how we've got to do something every day on social media. And what benefits are you seeing from uh, doing more social media activity now? Uh, we're spreading the word um, about the business throughout the area. Uh, we're getting more likes and more people sharing. Um, and, and a bigger profile, a much, a much better profile um, on social media and on Google. And I understand that you are expanding out your offering so that you're able to offer glamping pods as well. So let's tell me a little bit about that. Yes, well, we have some land um, that is just woodland at the moment. And for a long time, we wanted to get camping pods. And we finally got planning permission in November. Um, which we were delighted about. So we're now going to offer a self-catering luxury camping pod. It's not just a wooden shed um, and you lie on the floor. It's going to have a television, a log burning stove, a little kitchenette, ensuite. You know, the days of people running across campsite with a loo roll in the hand in the middle of the night. Those days are over. Nobody wants to do that anymore. <laughs> so it's got to be um, a, a luxury self-catered experience and the social media activity that you're doing now and the plan that you've developed from working with Emily under Digital Tech Cumbria is that helping you get more leisure visitors that will enjoy your camping pods as well yes definitely and what Emily's done is is has worked through a process where we clearly can identify our target market now before we were just going to have a bit of a blunderbuss approach and hope that everybody came to us and now we actually know who our target market is and why they'll come to Walney, what they'll do here and that they'll bring a pet probably as well. And tell me, how did you become aware to start off with of Digital Tech Cumbria and the support that was available? It was a link in an email from Cumbria Local Enterprise Partnership and so the help from Digital Tech Cumbria has been so valuable to this business. So if I was thinking of joining Digital Tech Cumbria, what would you say to me? Do it. Your, your, your biggest regret will be that you didn't do it sooner. And on a scale of one to ten, where ten's fantastic, how would you rate the support under? I'd actually say 20 out of 10, but that's bending the rules, isn't it? I would, I would urge any small business, if you're just thinking where do I go now what do I do next just get in touch with them and uh, it's the help we've had has been fantastic I have a plan and it's set in stone and we know what we're doing Heather it's been absolutely brilliant speaking with you thank you ever so much for your time and we look forward to seeing what's next So that just seemed to cut off uh, a few seconds earlier there. I'm not quite sure why. Might be, uh, might be the connection. But, uh, but uh, that was the first video from West Point on Walney Island. So, Mark, back across to you. Thanks. Thanks very much, Andrew. Um, and yeah, hopefully that's um, yeah, it's a really useful video to um, to, to share the context of the uh, the program. Ultimately, it's about having impact. It's about making a day to day difference to uh, to businesses, and we're keen. Um, to uh, to help as many Cumbrian uh, bus based businesses as possible embrace digital technology to help them overcome the current challenges I think um, most businesses are, are facing, but obviously to thrive into the uh, into the future. 
Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, about the offer in, in, in a bit of detail, but not too much detail uh, now to get to, to just to bring it to life in terms of what's available uh, available to uh, to businesses. One of the, uh, the the ways that uh, programs such as these are often promoted is to start by saying it's uh, it's free. There's no cost to the uh, to, to to the to the business. Uh, it's absolutely uh, absolutely great, and it and it and it is you know a big bonus that um, that you know expert support can be provided at no cost. But but of course you know that shouldn't be the reason to get involved. Um, and and ultimately you know as I say, there's nothing nothing really is free in life. There is an investment in time and commitment. Uh, and, the, and the support may lead to uh, investment needed to generate additional income or, or to, uh, to, to to save uh, save money. So it, it's about doing it for the um, for, for the right uh, right reason uh, reasons. So you know why are businesses getting involved? Um, I think largely you know there, there's lots of reasons really um, because you know it's been pretty well proven now that effective adoption you know helps to increase sales. Can save money and uh, enhances the customer customer offer. Uh, that was true before the pandemic uh, uh, kicked in, and it's and it's even more imperative now. I think the the, the challenges are, 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 are manyfold. Why why businesses sometimes struggle to, uh, to to really embrace digital as much as they might. Uh, you know, certainly the the businesses we we come across, they you know they they generally want to get better at digital, um, but whether it's a lack of time or a lack of knowledge. Or knowing which horse to back, um, sometimes we can challenge, challenging to get uh, challenging to get started. And why do most want to improve? There's lots of reasons, um, but some of the principal ones we see are, um, for example, to save costs, to protect or increase sales and profits, uh, retain existing customers or find find new ones, um, increase business resilience to deal with shocks and uh, and challenges that are faced. Again particularly relevant in the uh, current time we are, are in. Um, but, then, you know, increasing uh, agility, becoming more fleet, fleet of foot, being able to attract staff where, you know, people now expect to uh, see digital technologies being used within businesses. Um, to, to stay competitive, um, to enhance their uh, existing products and services and to develop new ones. And also the innovation side of things. So to, to, to help them to stand out from the crowd, to uh, differentiate themselves. Ultimately, only uh, only one business can ever be the, the cheapest. So it means that uh, the rest of us, uh, to, some, to a greater or lesser extent, need to innovate in, uh, in some way. Um, a great example, anecdotally example, um, we, uh, we were chatting through with Andrew yesterday, is, is one where you know, a business that's having dipped their, their toe in the water uh, with uh, with online se uh, selling, you know, this may might, might yield a, an initial success, uh, but there's still a way to go to optimize approaches to become a, a true uh, e-commerce business, um, and that involves you know things like putting systems in place plat and using platforms effectively, data analysis to understand buyer behaviors and sales performance and and so on. So it's areas like that we can, I guess, help businesses to make the uh, the the next step. But that's just one uh, one example. So um, to, just to share a bit more detail, what's available to participate in businesses. So firstly, we have access to um, digital technology experts uh, who renew, uh, renew, review current levels of adoption and assess what more, uh, what more businesses can do to improve profitability, resilience, performance, without, ideally without breaking the bank, of course. Uh, that means getting a good understanding of, um, uh, of future aspirations uh, so every every support package that we help develop is bespoke to the business. We're, we're not sort of um, a solution coming in looking for the problem. It genuinely is looking for what is right for each individual business and then helping them to uh, to get uh, get started. Um, and, and we can also provide that sort of initial hand holding to find the right suppliers to take the initial steps to plan and uh, and, and to roll our sleeves up and, and get involved at the uh, uh, at the start. Secondly, um, we've developed a contemporary uh, digital maturity assessment tool to help understand current levels of attainment. But perhaps more importantly, it's about pinpointing um, those areas for development, uh, which are going to lead to, you know, to a brighter and more sustainable future. There's also a broad range of uh, inspiring digital technology events and webinars. These cover a variety of uh, key topics, including things like future planning for digital, selling more, uh, increasing promotional effectiveness, operating more efficiently developing new and improved uh, uh, 
products, uh, products and services, and protecting businesses better through cybersecurity and effective financial management. We have a digital skills academy, which uh, covers some of the topics I alluded to in the webinars, but just goes into a lot more, a lot more detail um, designed to uh, to increase digital skills right across the, the business, um, but in a lot more depth to help embed uh, embed learning um, for future uh, future use. We have uh, technology showcases. We have a couple of those um, planned later in the year um, that's supported by local and major digital providers. Uh, that offer the opportunity to learn about, interact with, and test drive a range of different digital technologies. Um, that can all sound a little bit highbrow, but we do aim to take a very practical approach, focusing on the technologies that will specifically assist the, the, the businesses based in the county. So it's very much focused on local uh, sector sector needs. So it's very much a, a, the focus there. So yeah, very keen for many of you to get involved in, in that as possible. Uh, and finally, uh, currently, we also assist with super fast broadband. So this is about assistance to identify the most appropriate and cost effective options. Um, it is you know, very much a key enabler to uh, underpin increased use of, uh, of digital. So you know, part of the support we're able to offer is, um, is finding the right uh, and most, cost, as I say, cost effective solution. The great news is um, the program is available to the vast majority of businesses in the county. So, you know, we can help in terms of uh, in terms of co confirming that. Um, I think the businesses we've worked with um, have gained a, a lot. Um, I think there's, there's certainly we've engaged with well over well over 100 businesses now in uh, to a lesser or greater extent. Uh, and most, I think, have expressed a, a, an increased appetite for more as a result of getting uh, getting involved. Um, we do still have a good number of places available, um, but we are urging businesses to sign up as soon as possible to get the most from their their involvement. Because there is, as you can you know see from what I've done or, or heard what I've just described, there are a number of different elements to this, and businesses really can can uh, benefit from getting involved from with, with the variety. We're, we're delighted to share more later about how businesses and yourselves can can get involved. Uh, but for now, I'm going to hand back to. Uh, uh, back to, uh, to to Andrew um, to, um, uh, to 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 look at the uh, Digital Skills Academy offer. I have set up and run my own digital agency called A Digital for several years now. And I'm also the author of a book called Holistic Website Planning. So uh, over the years, I've worked on lots of website projects where we really try and uh, emphasize the importance of digital transformation and making sure that that is considered as part of any website project and how it can benefit the business beyond the website simply being a marketing tool. So the masterclass that I run with the uh, the Digital Skills Academy is all about reclaiming your time by using automation in your business. So a simple example might be automating invoicing. Uh, using cloud accounting software, you can automate invoices to be sent out on, on an ongoing basis without really having to manage it. And if you tie that up with online payment services, then you can essentially have recurring invoices that are entirely hands-free. So a typical business attending the masterclass will learn a little bit more about what automation is, what sort of activities uh, would make a good option for automation, because not necessarily every administrative task can be automated. So understanding which systems and services can be automated, how you might pair those up, what sort of processes you might be able to automate, and then how you might go about it backed up with a series of examples. Well, businesses attending the masterclass should really be able to see an almost immediate benefit uh, because we'll be talking about uh, examples of real world automations that can save time. Uh, there'll be uh, live examples, there'll be software recommendations, there'll be approaches that we'll talk about in terms of how to set up an automation because you don't want the automation to be all about the technology. It's got to sit with people and process first.
Okay. Thanks very much for that, Andrew. That's uh, that's great. And so I quite like this idea of the recording as well, because you can appear in the room twice, which is uh, which is which is great. So uh, thanks for uh, thanks for that. So we, we mentioned at the start that we're keen to uh, uh, you know, we've shared some information now about the program and uh, some. We're also keen to get your um, your input and experiences and perceptions of how businesses are adopting uh, digital uh, across the county. Um, so to help with this, we've developed a few questions that we'd like to put to you through the use of the uh, the poll functionality in, uh, in in Zoom. This is obviously a test of uh, our digital technology adoption prowess as well. And as if by magic, the question has a, has appeared right uh, right before me. So we, we, we've got a series of four questions. Um, most of you would have um, would, would have participated in uh, in something like this before. But uh, um, all we'd ask you to do is just um, to take a look at the question, in this case, what uh, digital technology topics are of greatest interest to the businesses that you engage with? And uh, if we can just ask you to uh, to go through and select the options which are most relevant to uh, to, to your business, then we'll uh, uh, just give you a few moments to do that, and then we'll uh, have a look to see what uh, uh, see what the responses are. So uh, we'll just give you uh, if you if you'd be kind enough to uh, take a look, we'll give you a few moments to do so. Yeah, not seen any 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 votes come in as uh, as yet. And I think sorry, one thing you will need to do is once you've made your selections, is just to uh, I think to confirm at the uh, at the end. I don't think it lets you submit, Mike. Oh, does it? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've selected a couple and ticked them, but the submit button doesn't seem to allow you to submit. There's more questions that you need to answer further down. You have to answer all of them before you can. Oh submit. right, sorry. <laughs> right, my mistake. There you go. That's the that's the uh, the, the digital prowess I was uh, I was referring to. I beg your pardon. So yes, the um, I thought they were coming up individually, but they've come up in one go. So there is they're, they're all relatively short. So um, yeah, if you can scroll th scroll through and uh, just answer the uh, each of the four uh, four questions, uh, I'll give you a few mo more moments to do that. <laughs> sorry about that. Button goes red when you've finished all of them, and then you can submit it. Yeah, thanks for that, Jackie. I can see the progress on here, but uh, but not able to uh, obviously not to uh, to participate. Okay, we've got quite a few in. Um, yeah, eight out of fourteen. Just give you a few moments more just to uh, to com to complete. Okay, almost there. I'll just give it ten more seconds, and then I'll uh, I'll end the poll. Okay, I'm going to end it now. Hopefully, we now see uh, and share the results. So hopefully, everybody can uh, can see uh, can see those. Um, so uh, yeah, should should have had the the countdown uh, sound there or something like that, perhaps. But uh, look, really interesting. And thanks very much for uh, for for the input. So you can see there, I think the uh, the most popular topics are in red. And yeah, not too many surprises there that cyber security and digital marketing come out near the near the top. Certainly that's our experience as, uh, as well. But also e-commerce is scoring fairly, fairly highly, um, as is actually a good number of business, uh, a good number of responses around emerging technologies as well. So um, we're delighted to support with that as well. Um, digitalization, digitalization of manufacturing processes is, is, uh, is pretty high high up there as well but there's a nod to every single one so that's uh, that's that's interesting um on the second question we've got uh, what level of digital awareness do you think the majority of businesses are at um real real spread there a, a equal number of those starting out as as experts um so um again that is what we see too there's i, I think we you know we, we can assist with uh with, with, with all uh with all levels but uh, obviously you know it's a very different approach depending on where your start point is 
Um, the third one, again, thank you for your responses on this. Please indicate the barriers uh, to, uh, to technology uh, it's being seen in the businesses that you work with. So, uh, um, yeah, so coming out top is knowledge and skills, not a surprise. And hopefully some of the things we mentioned are a good antidote to that, but uh, cost as well, um, finding the right technology. So, again, a really good spread of, um, of answers and, again, does mirror I guess it's going to mirror because that's why you know we're asking options that we we are sort of seeing, um, but um, but yeah, certainly the the, the most common ones there are uh, the, the, would would tally with our our experience. Uh, and finally, what impact has the pandemic had on businesses ad, uh, adopting digital tech? Um, so yeah, many adopting faster. Um, in fact, most are adopting faster. Perhaps some not uh, to full to best advantage, um, but some are really sort of um, harnessing it well by the look of it. So. Uh, that's really, uh, really good to see. Um, before we sort of go on to the uh, on to the next part, is there um, uh, just just open it up to uh, uh, to, to to people? Is there um, uh, any, anybody like to make any comments? Is there any questions in the or, or comments in the in the in the chat at all? There's no comments in the. There's no nothing in the chat, Mark. But um, okay. please feel free to open up your mics and question. Oh. Yeah. Libby's just having to apologise, and she's having to leave. Um, okay, thanks, Livy. Take care. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. Really useful. Um, sorry, I've got to jump on something else, but that's really, really helpful. Thank you very much. Good. Thanks, Livy. Take care. Okay, um, so we, we can come back to that in the in in the sort of Q and A at the uh, at the end. Um, I just wanted to touch very briefly on um, on and, and take a few moments now to look at um, at why and how um, you might uh, work with us. Um, I guess for the, the main purpose is really for, you know, a lot of it is, is altruistic reasons, really. We're all here to help businesses, uh, local businesses to succeed. And it's an area um, that's essential uh, to all enterprise, really, I think almost without exception. And certainly will be for those um, that you work with um, to get through, the, you know, the current challenges and thrive into the future. But, but what else? I mean, we've been delighted to work with a number of um, local network and business support bodies to make um, uh, the organisations they engage with uh, aware of the support and to uh, obviously to, to sign them up for, uh, for support. We work with um, uh, BECBC, uh, Federation of Small Businesses, uh, Cumbria Tourism, the growth, uh, Cumbria Growth Hub, Cumbria Chamber, Family Business Network, Pharma Network, and a, and a number of others. And the ways we work with them has been quite varied, really, um, but included sort of things like sharing of information, running joint events, delivering tech showcases together, um, website links, communications going out, including newsletters and social media, etc. So we're really very open to, um, uh, you know, to, to working together and, and looking for, you know, that win-win, if you like, of of um, cooperating with other organizations and there may be other possibilities like you know jointly branded training or other things we haven't even even thought about yet so very open to uh, ideas and suggestions just very keen to engage and um, you know play a part and support what what, what others are doing uh, as well as uh, as well as obviously keen to deliver the support that uh, we're offering for the benefit of, uh, of businesses. Um, I think the one those that we have worked with, you know, have have had benefit from association with the program and the topic area, and uh, naturally we'd be delighted to discuss with each of you how we might be able to work together and plan to uh, to follow our path to the event. So that's me for now. Uh, again, back over to uh, back to you, Andrew, for uh, for the uh, for for the next case study. Coniston Stonecraft makes beautiful luxury products inspired by the Lakeland landscape and manufactured from locally quarried slate. We caught up with MD Brendan Donnelly to find out more. Brendan, please describe Coniston Stonecraft for me. Okay, we're a small manufacturing business on the slopes of Coniston Old Man and we make beautiful products for kitchen and home and signage out of the local slate. All the quarries that we use are within about 10 miles of here and it's beautiful product to work with. Has technology and digital always been an important part for Coniston Stonecraft or is it a fairly new focus? 
It's a very new focus. We are a very traditional, very craft-based business, and we didn't use technology practically at all until last year. I took over last year, and we've been introducing as much as we can push onto a very traditional business in a very slow and methodical and structured way. How did you become aware of Digital Tech Cumbria and what made you get involved? I think a friend of mine pointed it out to me and uh, I just I wrote to them and said, what can you do for us? And um, he very kindly wrote back and I enrolled in a couple of, a couple of the uh, seminars and the web, web seminars and we just took it from there and I, I have found it very easy to work with and very rewarding to be honest because a lot of this stuff, I'm nearly 60 and a lot of this stuff doesn't doesn't ring any bells with me. I need somebody to hold my hand as you walk me through this sort of stuff. How did you find the digital maturity assessment? Did it highlight things you hadn't thought about before? Yeah, it made me look at the business in a slightly different manner and it did highlight a couple of things that I didn't know about. And um, you can't use everything about the digital, you know, you can't just snap your fingers and all of a sudden you become a digital business. But it certainly made us look at areas that we can, we have some control over. And so we've, we've moved a little bit more in that direction. And some other areas that we think, well, when we grow a little bit, those are the sort of things that we want to use. What are the main impacts that working with Digital Tech Cumbria has, has had for you? It's helped me to look at my whole business and it certainly helped in terms of the workflow. We, we used to run around like lunatics, not really knowing what we were doing uh, and satisfying the people who shouted loudest. And now we've got a much better workflow and we've digitalised that and it's, it's much easier. It's very, very simple. But it's for us. It's it's a big step forward, and also we are we have got a very good web presence, and the web now takes fifty percent plus of our business, and that's a major um, major change in the way that we do business, and it's it's insulated us from the vagaries of working in an area that at some point is open, and then a month later is shut. We have a fantastic Twitter following. We have a fantastic Facebook following. And we, we use those now to build our business. And we find that we are getting approached from people from all over the country and all over Europe and all over the world. If I said to you I was thinking of getting involved with Digital Tech Cumbria, what would you say to me? I would say do it because uh, you can't lose. Um, it, it helps you look at your business in a slightly different way and the people are very knowledgeable, very, very knowledgeable, and they're very helpful. And so for us, we're really, really traditional business. If somebody said, oh, we're going to digitalize your business, I would have just said, that's nonsense. But but actually, it's been really helpful. And it's enabled us to look at our business and say, what else can we do? What's next for Coniston Stonecraft, Brendan? What can we expect to see from you guys going forward? Well, we have a full, completely full order book. Um, we currently are still, if we didn't get another order, we'd still be working until Christmas. So if we carries on like this, then probably we'll have to look for new premises and we'll have to expand. Brendan, it's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you. We look forward to seeing what's next for Coniston Stonecraft. Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Great, thanks very much for, uh, for for running that through uh, through Angela. I think it was a you know, great uh, great story, and uh, you know, really really great to uh, to see the, uh, the the impact of the uh, of the support there. So, uh, um, so at, at this point, we um, we we're planning to uh, to move over to uh, to take any uh, questions. Hopefully, we'll have our answers, or if we haven't, we'll at least go away and look. Um, but also any comments or feedback that uh, that you may have. Um, Jenny, are you happy to? I think there's a few, one or two questions. Is there one or two in the in the in the chat? 
There was a couple in the chat, yes. Uh, one from uh, Lindsay at the left, just to say to see we ask where we've had um, most success in terms of sectors and geographies. Um, I have to say, looking at the clientele base, the, uh, if I refer to the district councils, we are actually very much covered uh, across all areas in terms of businesses. Um, we probably have a, a slight uh, uh, under representation of Carlisle, but everywhere else is well represented. Um, in terms of the sectors, um, it is hospitality and tourism led, but I think that's probably because initially when the programme came on board, we were mid pandemic and we were mid um, working with partners um, which had a, had a forward face. So we worked very heavily in the first instance with Cumbria Tourism. Um, so it, it does feel at the moment we are, we are uh, um, tourism and hospitality heavy. We also are, that is one of our biz, biggest sectors. So you would naturally assume that we, um, it would be uh, that way, but it, it doesn't mean that we won't support any other sector. It just means that we're just slightly changing our vent on our advertising and our marketing um, areas really. So um, yeah, very mixed. As you can see from the two case studies that we've got, you know, the, it, is, it is very small, very micro businesses, and we have actually got some large scale uh, businesses as well under the ERDF regulations, I will emphasize. Um, after that, I can I could start to list off a, a, a number of sectors, but we we what I will say we covered quite well across the board. We've got manufacturing, hospitality, tourism. We've got because of the regulation relaxation because of COVID, we've got a little bit of retail going on because we can do that. Um, we have got um, yes, quite quite a real strong mix. Um, and we, we do, we are actually about to do, which Mark can probably go into a little bit more detail, a survey across the sectors, across Cumbria, to look at the sectors and the um, digital tech adoption that, we're, that, uh, that is going on and see where we can regroup our, um, our target market if necessary. So um, it's a good point, yeah, because certainly we did a fair bit of research at the beginning and and, and ongoing, but uh, obviously um, it's uh, it's a bit of a you know moving feast at the moment, isn't it, with um, requirements and needs changing as uh, uh, as we go through um, you know various uh, various stages of, uh, of of hopefully coming out of the the, uh, the the lockdowns and and so on. So, but no, you're absolutely absolutely right, Janet. It's a, it is a really good variety of um, of businesses, and we. We've um, the team of uh, specialists that I alluded to have a good spread of um, sector as well as technology and, and business knowledge, really. So, um, so you know, we can really cater for for you know almost any any uh, you know any sector almost. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, very 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 pleased and able to support uh, support Port Many. Um, I did. I think Leslie just uh, did. You did ask about um, about how we can uh, we, we can promote the, the 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 growth hub as well. And Janet might might add to this, but I think um, in general terms, we um, you know we 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 are keen to uh, to to, um, to to broker um, out you know to other support providers, um, particularly. Um, you know where either we've reached an end or they they uh, they, they have uh, needs that um, that we aren't able to specifically meet. So uh, so very keen uh, very keen on that as well as uh, sort of mutual promotional and, and event activity. But um, I, I don't know if that covers everything, Janet. Or there's other uh, anything else to add on that? Um, yeah, no, Leslie uh, Le Leslie from the growth of. Um, we, we've done a lot together over the recent months so that's been really useful and the ongoing promotion of that will, um, will help us as well in both directions actually um, so thanks for that Leslie. There's a comment come in from James about equity finance. Uh, James um, I've been involved in this in a former life so I, I was part of the Northern Powerhouse uh, structure um, equity finance as you are probably already know is a difficult one in Cumbria the, predominantly yeah. a lot of family businesses going on there that uh, don't tend to look for the equity financing um, if I'm brutally honest and I would rather be brutally honest but the scale of the businesses that we're looking at where we're involved with at the moment probably wouldn't be looking for equity, equity finance but we do work closely with um, FW Capital and uh, Manchester Growth, Growth Company to ensure that 
we could probably get them financed in other directions if it, if it was finance that was an issue. Um, I know full well about um, the equity for through the Northern Powerhouse, so would always refer if we got that interest. It's just not something that's coming through at the moment. So sure. I'd like to sure. set an expectation that we see it, we don't actually. Yeah. Absolutely not. Thank you for that. Thank you. Any more for any more questions, guys? Le Lindsay. I've got one, Janet, if that's okay. I think, um, thanks for the update about the sectors. I guess where, where I was coming from with it was um, as much thinking about what we can do from a business support perspective. So I suppose what works well and having those case studies is really, really helpful. Um, but where can we... Um, where can we do more um, around some of that marketing as well? I know from my perspective, we talk to a whole range of sectors and recommend to them. So I suppose kind of interested to see what actually follows through into a lead, um, where there might be, I guess using some of that intelligence from the, the poll to think about how we can target certain sectors um, to generate greater interest. So but yeah, really, really helpful on that one. The other thing for me with the programme, today has been a real a bit of an eye-opener for me in terms of the digital marketing stuff in particular um, and social media I guess in, in, in quite specifically I've never really thought of um, social media as a technology in itself in relation to this program so I've seen some of the events that have been scheduled in and I couldn't quite relate the two to what you were doing um, but it's really helped me think about it differently and I think that in itself and some of the um, social media support that you can give, I think I can sell it differently if sells the right word. But yeah, I think it, it, for me, it's been really, really helpful. So thank um, you. Question a statement, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for that, Lindsay. Um, Jackie, and I'm going to say Maisie, but I'm certain it's, I'm certain it's not. Is it Maisie at the left that does the marketing? Yeah, they're working quite closely together. So they, they do do a lot of joint sharing and that. It is an interesting one, and I'm sure there's probably quite a varied opinion as to whether digital marketing in its broader sense does fit under the digital, but it does. It's one of the main areas of it, really, because if you don't, if you can't promote your product in a method that suits today's world, which is digital, you then can't grow your business, really, in a lot of ways, if you take it to its simplest format. Um, so it, it is very important. It is one of our biggest areas that, is, that people come to us for support. Um, we so for me, it was, it was more about, I, I wouldn't have put, personally wouldn't have put Digitech Digital Cumbria as the first point of contact for that kind of query. I would have placed them elsewhere. Yeah. But that in itself really, really helps um, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's great to hear. Yeah, no, we're certainly working uh, across the board. Um, are they, we're ongoing in developing our dig, what we call our digital heroes videos. So what you've seen today is two of them. There's one already in, in the public domain. They all come through our website and we use them a lot through our social media campaigns. We're going to develop a few more. We're hoping to split them across various different sectors so that we're not predominantly looking at one sector when we're using them. What we're also hoping to do is to have our masterclass associates uh, produce a video very similar to the one that you've seen from Andrew, where they give a bite-sized piece of information about what their master class will be. Um, if I just go into a little bit of practicals, which might help, the master classes run um, for two hours over three weeks. So they're not taking up a mass amount of time. They're just uh, a two hour session, generally on a Tuesday or a Thursday, and they're over a three week period so that businesses can take that out and use that quite in depth. They, they use that time more in depth than the webinar. They get more details. It's much around more around what their business wants, what their business needs. And it's a bit of um, knowledge transfer between the other delegates that are there as well. We don't make those public because you tend to discuss more about the uh, business, your business, so we don't make them public, they're shared within the group so that the group can take them away, learn from them, use them for homework because we do set them homework, <laughs> which is quite scary. The webinars are very much bite-sized, they're an hour in length, an hour and a half in length, we just touch on the topics, but they're there to encourage you to come along to the programme, they're there to encourage you to involve yourselves in the masterclasses, 
they're there to encourage you to gain the one-to-one -one support that we offer. We are European funded, so for those, most of you on the call have a background in it. It does mean we have a limited number of hours, but we try to use that very productively. So we're not a lot of form filling, we go straight into a lot of the support rather than a lot uh, of background information that we need from the clients. We tick the boxes to get the information, but we want to move into the actual support quite quickly. Uh, for Phil benefit, um, we still can't support nuclear, but if they can cover themselves up as being in the supply chain, <laughs> we'll have a good go. Um, I see every application that comes through and I really, really don't want to turn anybody down. Um, occasionally I have to, but I will try to find a route in to support them. Um, I think Mark alluded to that we've seen over 100. I think if we looked at every inquiry to date, we're about 230. Now we haven't been able to support 230 because some of them have not been eligible. Some do a, what I call a knee jerk reaction. They register, but they don't continue to work with us. So they drop off a little bit. Um, but in general, we have about 140 odd businesses bubbling away in the background wanting support. Um, and we have until, March 2022 to hit our targets, probably slightly longer if we're very, very good, but um, we need to hit our ERDF targets by March of next year. So that's where we come to when we're looking for the partners to ensure that we have a good flow of businesses coming through and that we are, have got them ahead of that, not, not too near to the, to the end date, if you get what I mean. We'd like to have enough businesses on board by the late autumn so that we can get them all completed and finished by the end of our contractual obligation, if that helps with the practical side of it. And I'll open up and be quiet again and open up to any more questions. <laughs> So just, just a couple of comments uh, from, uh, from from Paul Foster. Paul, nice to see you. Uh, Paul's from the FSB. I guess I, I suspect everybody or most of you will know him. Uh, Paul, thanks for the comments there. And yeah, we, we very much enjoyed doing the joint events with you as well and all the support you provided with, with that. So uh, yeah, that's really, really great. And uh, thank you for the offer of tagging on social media as well. We, we, we'll, we'll certainly do that. And uh, as Janet said, we've got uh, a stream of uh, of new ones coming coming through as well. So hopefully... You know, apart from uh, apart from promoting the program, which predominantly, obviously, you know, that's what we we came for them to do. But it is also about sort of you know awareness sharing as well about what's possible and how others are you know how we how others are using it. So perhaps you know just starting to um, uh, to to overcome you know almost that like demystifying what's uh, you know what it's all about, uh, make it very practical and uh, and so on. But uh, yeah, thank you for your support and your your comments. Much appreciated, Paul. Yes. John, can I pick up on the comment that you said there about nuclear? Um, yeah, you would. Can, can you just expand a little bit on what you meant? Because a lot of the companies don't actually work in nuclear. They, they are working, they're a supply chain organization that happen to work or provide equipment, should I say, to the nuclear industry, but don't necessarily have a, a nuclear pedigree. Um, it, as you know, and always have done, and you put me on the spot there, uh, you devil. Um, it is a hard one. Um, it always used to be set on a trade imbalance, if it was, if, and, and actually there, to a degree, how they looked forward facing. So if it was really predominantly nuclear that they looked like they were involved in, then it was generally a no. But you know of a couple of examples in the county um, where we know that they're not they're probably 20% nuclear, but 80% in, in oil and gas or engineering development. So I'd have to say, I'd bounce that back and have to say, I'd have to take it on a, on a case by case basis to look at them. Um, remembering we're also talking about small and medium sized enterprises, not large enterprises. Um, so that's easier to look into their structure to see what they're, they're looking at um, and what, the, what it is that they, do within the nuclear industry. I think we're seeing less and less of it in Cumbria. I don't think it's probably the same challenge as it was six or eight years ago with the changing going on in our nuclear industry, but we, we just have to tread carefully. Tony's on the call and I don't know if he wants to put in anything more to that. Tony is our lead at, uh, at the government department that manages the contract. He may want to put in more, he may be happy with that judgment. 
I'll just no, that's you. fine, John. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I found the session really interesting. Um, I suppose, um, from our point of view, it's, it's one thing having the infrastructure available to them now within Cumbria, but it's uh, it was great to see how you're going to then be able to help them help these some of these businesses make uh, best use of of the some some to, in in their cases uh, the new technologies that are available to them now. I haven't lived in Cumbria myself for a while. When I worked at Sellafield, uh, I know some of the great little businesses that there are there that make these quite bespoke products. And hopefully, if they, you know, like, you know, if they if they digitalise, that they they'll realise uh, very quickly what a massive uh, potential for for growth it can have on their business. You know, some of these businesses that are working out of very small premises and. Uh, you know, they're, they're there to just uh, have a boom. I was really interested in some of the poll results as well. Obviously, digital uh, marketing, e-commerce, cybersecurity. I was uh, pleased to see that, obviously, you're able to help them, coach them into the use of uh, invoicing and that kind of stuff. So it all, it all looks good to me. Um, what, you know, the work that you're doing, keep up the great work. Um, thanks for the invite. Thanks, Tony. So yeah, jumping back to your question, Phil. Yeah, just um, just encourage anybody to get get in touch, and I'll always try to work with them in whatever format I can do. Um, and you know, well, sorry, Janet. Just one final comment. I, 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 the, the feeling I get, and I haven't lived in Cumbria myself. I think the big the big challenge for yourself is obviously getting people to to make the first contact. Once once you get them sort of hooked and involved. So obviously marketing uh, and getting people involved maybe through the growth up and that's going to be a big challenge to us or one of the biggest challenges. But uh, the, from what I've seen that, you know, the, the support that you're giving is, you know, fantastic once, once you've got them involved. Thanks for that, Tony. That's brilliant. Thank just, you. Just build on, 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 a, on a point there, Janet. You know, yeah, the nuclear industry in Cumbria is, is well known on the West Coast. But then if you move inland 10 miles, you've got such a fantastic array of, manuf of companies that do manufacturing. Yeah. You know, I didn't know about the Coniston Slate. <laughs> what a fantastic story that is. And, and there's, there's, there's dozens and dozens of companies like that up and down the county that are heavily involved in manufacturing, but don't necessarily have manufacturing as, should I say, their core thought into what I would call manufacturing. So, you know, you've got, I think you've got a plethora of organizations that you can tap into that don't necessarily feed into the nuclear industry, yeah, but feed into the other sectors if equally as good. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and we are getting there. We are getting a wider profile throughout the county and we are quite comfortable with that. Um, um, it's, you know, just as I say, we, we need to look at those that have uh, anything on their website remotely suggesting nuclear that we need to look at them more in depth. But no, thanks. Thank you for that. Does anybody have any more questions? I'll just jump in and, and say that um, because cybersecurity came up quite high there, we're actually running a uh, a webinar in July, the beginning of July, with Cumbria Police um, on a uh, on cybersecurity, and they're going to present an hour-long webinar on 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 where to go for support in terms of cybersecurity. So um, please push. We'll we'll be uh, putting that out on social media, um, and please, if you can follow that up with your um, businesses, that would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Janet. That's great. Well, I, I didn't say this at the beginning, but I was going to promise that we uh, we would keep this to the uh, to the hour that's been allowed, and we're we're now three minutes inside that. So uh, so it's worth the time, even though we didn't make the promise. So uh, um, I just wanted to uh, to to finish up by saying, um, you know, I hope everybody's found the uh, session useful and interesting uh, today, and. Um, um, just obviously very keen, you know, probably stating the obvious that, you know, we're very keen to, the, you know, to, to share and, and for yourselves to share what's on offer to businesses and encourage them to express interest through the, the programme portal, which is uh, dtc.winningmoves.com. Um, we're also going to follow up the session uh, by picking up discussions with yourselves, if, if you're happy to do so in, in the days and weeks to, uh, to, to come. 
um, and we'll share uh, some information by by email as well with contact details and program information. I think most of you know it, and a lot of it's on the on the portal. But just to uh, to, to to sort of to finish uh, finish things off. So I think it just leads me uh, to say once again on behalf of uh, the uh, Digital Tech Cumbria team, big thanks for uh, for joining us today for investing your time. It really is very much uh, appreciated. And it's also, um, you know, it's also for, for me a big thanks to uh, to Janet, to Kate, to uh, to Andrew, and to Jackie as part of the team as well for uh, for, for making the session happen today. Um, so, uh, um, really appreciate your your involvement, and look forward to speaking to you again very soon in the future.